Hey gang, Jack Lair here. Uh, just uh, doing some work on a uh, GameCube uh, that I got off of eBay. Got it for, I think, uh, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $10. Uh, but, uh, said it was as is. I just mainly wanted it for the case, because I'm going to try and do some things with that. Uh, got some ideas, but opened it up because when I plugged it in, the light would come on, but nothing else would happen. And of course, that always intrigues me when it gets power, because if it doesn't get power, then it doesn't get power. And then there's a fuse in here that we can replace, and we can go from there. Or it could be any number of things with the, the power supply unit that I am not comfortable in handling. Because as I learned taking apart a camera once that had a flash, capacitors hurt. Uh, but I opened it up and it is full of something that fills me with dread. And that is rust. So the unit is fairly rusty. Now, I once had a Nintendo 64 sit in my grandmother's basement. And it did something similar. So I don't know if it's just that it was sitting in a place that got very damp. Or if it was in if it was in some type of flood, but it is filthy. So I've got my alcohol and I've got uh, my handy dandy toothbrush here, and we are going to go through and clean up as much as we can, and see if we can get any signs of life out of it. Otherwise, we may see. Uh, I may just see who would want the parts and then go from there because like I said I just wanted the case all right gang so here is the uh, somewhat cleaned up uh, cleaned up the contacts anyways put it back together and lo and behold I ended up with this focus focus Come on, there we go. Choose system settings now. I don't know what that means. My guess is the CMOS battery died, but I don't know. Let's see if we can get it to do that again. So there, got that working. Uh, now I need to take it back apart, do a thorough cleaning, and then we'll go from there. All right, so we are back. We are uh, continuing on with the uh, GameCube. We've got it working. Now we're gonna go ahead and tear it back down and clean it thoroughly, thoroughly. Uh, not, we're gonna start by getting rid of all of the rust that you can see here. And then we're going to do it with just some good old fashioned sandpaper. Now the tricky thing is we want to make sure that we sand it away from all the electronics so we're actually going to tear this down even further. I tore it apart before so I know how it works. Uh, but basically there are these tiny screws down here and that will release the majority of it and then we can go ahead and get the rest as well and then we're going to tear that apart and get rid of those little spots there we go and then that way when we put it all back together i'll feel a little better i'm also going to do uh try and do a little bit of better job clean up in there i don't think i have a brush long enough though so that may get interesting all right, so here is the spot that you saw before. Uh, we got rid of most of the rust, not all of it. Uh, I uh, don't think I have enough uh, high of a, or low of a grit of sandpaper to get rid of it all, but I got enough of it off to where I'm happy with it. I'm uh, gonna keep cleaning, and then I've got uh, that piece over there to do, and then that piece, and then we'll put it all together and see what happens. Alright, here we are. We have it put all together. It's sitting on top of the one I normally use, my black one. 
and it is asking for the date and time. I'm going to go ahead and get this entered in, and then we're going to throw a game in and see if it'll read the discs. Alright, so we've got the disc being read, my son holding the little trigger thing, and there it is. So this is now a fully functional GameCube. Not bad. And I don't know what... Alright, so here is the GameCube that we I showed working just a little bit ago. It is real finicky. Uh, like, you have to turn it... You have to turn it on and off, and on and off, and on and off, and on and off before it finally fires up. This one, I just picked up for uh, $4. This one, the drive does not work, but everything else works flawless. It even came with all of the fun little plugs in the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this apart and this apart and move this drive over to here and then see if we can get one of these fully functional and then the other one will just be my problem child. Uh, and then I can just use the case for what I wanted it for to begin with. La 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 la. La 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 la. Don't they kind of look like two faces? Hello. Anyways. And of course, this guy is filthy. Filthy, 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 filthy. So we've got all another more cleaning. Yay! Just to compare the two, there's the new one, there's the one we got done cleaning. Yeah. Alright, so here is the GameCube of two GameCubes. It is working, and I've been testing it for the past uh, couple days. And here we are once again with... Uh, just an amazing island? Yeah, there we go. Here's the island, licensed by Nintendo, made by Sega. And we're gonna go ahead, trade monsters. I'm actually gonna play this sometime soon. But there you are. Uh, we took uh, $14 worth of non-working GameCubes, stuffed them together, and got a perfectly good working GameCube out of the deal. I'm probably going to get the, some extra cables, which I probably have some, uh, and go ahead and throw this in my son's room because he really loves some of the GameCube games. Plus, the GameCube has some of the best four-player games on it. Uh, so that way he'll be able to just play four-player with his friends uh, whenever they come over and visit him. All right, well, there you have it. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, play on.